it's, it's time. Uh, yes, so please start the recording. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, so uh, this is the second lecture of uh, uh, Alexander Lichak on uh, cut case spaces. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. So I I continue where I, have, where I had to stop last time. Um, so we continue with examples. Um, examples of um, of uh, spaces with curvature bound above. And so the, the main, so <laughs> probably the main example, so after the space of constant curvature, uh, complete Riemannian manifolds. And so the theorem, uh, which I am not going to prove, so it's essentially, it's essentially the, the comparison theorem of Rao. So it tells us that a complete Riemannian manifold is cut K in the sense I have defined if and only if the section curvature of all planes is at most kappa. So this is a local condition. And then there is a global condition. And the global condition is that the injectivity radius is at least as large as in the space of constant curvature kappa. Um, yeah, in the simply connected space. So uh, in the case of non-positive kappa, it means that uh, injectivity radius is infinite and equal to one, it means injective training is, is at least pi. So for kappa non-positive, non so for kappa at most, so for kappa zero or minus one, the condition on the injectivity radius is equivalent to the statement that the fundamental group is trivial. And this is a version of the theorem of Kata Adama that I have already mentioned. So essentially it tells us that if we have a complete Riemannian manifolds of non-positive, complete Riemannian manifold of non-positive curvature, if we take its universal covering, then it is a cut zero space. So this is uh, yeah, one of the main class of examples. And now we can use this class to, yeah, to obtain much more examples as follows. First of all, closed convex subset of cut kappa spaces are cut kappa. This is obvious. Then uh, if, we take, if we have two cut zero spaces, then we can take their product and they're still cut zero. And here's the connection between cut one and cut zero. If we take a space and, and cone it off, so take the Euclidean cone over it, then it's cut zero if and only if the space over which you take so which you cone off is cut one. Um, so probably you have, yeah, so most of you have seen these examples. So slightly more um, sophisticated examples. So trees are cut kappa for every k, for, for every kappa. So they are, they cut minus infinity spaces. Um, so here I saw a tree, this. And the tree is essentially so a possibly infinite gluing of segments along points. And more generally, so the theorem of Reshetniak, which uh, was the last thing I have stated last time, it allows us to yeah to glue spaces. So we 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 can start with uh, with Euclidean building blocks. Sorry, sorry. This. So we can start with convex subsets of Euclidean plane, say so take a circle and glue it along a point to an interval and then glue it along a point to a square and then glue this one along a segment uh, to something else which is flat and we can continue in this fashion and obtain my, uh, spaces which look very far from being manifolds. Um, so another example, which, uh, yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> it is not a, a not very large class of example, but it is again, the very basic of the theory. So Jordan domains of polygons in R2. So whenever we take a polygon, maybe convex or not, if we consider, so, uh, what is inside of this polygon and consider it with its, um, with its intrinsic uh, structure, then it is a cut zero space and you prove it by subdividing 
this uh, polygon into triangles using that each triangle is convex in R2, so it's um, cut zero, and the whole polygon is, uh, is obtained by gluing of these uh, triangles. And so the main, maybe so the first non-trivial example is the example of a, of a non-convex quadrangle, which we have started this with. And uh, so um, with quadrangle, uh, so if we see the boundary of this quadrangle, then it is a triangle. So uh, it um, so in uh, if you consider this quadrangle within itself, so then its boundary is a triangle. Yeah. So the shortest connection between uh, uh, y and z is uh, this broken line. And so the statement uh, that this space is cut zero, it means exactly that this triangle is thin. And this was Alexandrov's lemma, essentially. So one of its versions, namely version two of it. So is it, uh, is the connection to Alexandrov's lemma clear? This was important to me, the state. Okay. Uh, there seem to be no questions. Okay, so then um, a very important operation is, so the, the cut condition, so it's a condition about four points, so any metric, uh, so any uh, limiting operation for spaces usually preserves, so uh, finite, uh, finite uh, distances, and it's, it's a closed condition, so uh, in any reasonable sense, a limit of cut kappa space is cut kappa, so gram of Hausdorff limit, ultra limit, and so on. So, and using this uh, and the example about polygons, one can prove so the theorem of Bishop. So saying that if we take any Jordan domain in the Euclidean plane, uh, so, and uh, this curve might be very complicated. So something like a cough, uh, snowflake. So then what is inside is cut, is cut zero. Questions? Uh, so uh, now Sorry, I, I have a question. Uh, yes. Does it follow from what we did already? Uh, uh, which one? The last one. The, the... A, 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 about Jordan domains. Yes. Uh, more or less. So you can. Uh, uh, so uh, if you forget about details, then essentially you can write any Jordan domain as a limit of polygons which are inside of it. Okay, so and so thanks. you prove it first for the polygons, so for the Jordan polygons, and then uh, you, you, you use some limiting procedure to reduce it for the, for the limit. Okay, thanks. So there are some details, but uh, um, uh, this is essentially the proof. Okay. Maybe uh, a related question. So I missed. In what sense uh, are you talking about limits of these cat kappa spaces? Yeah. So I have not. I have not been precise. So for instance, you can you can say Gromov Hausdorff limit. So okay. any Gromov Hausdorff limit of cat kappa spaces, but also more general limits. So any ultra limit of cat kappa spaces is cat kappa. So here for the Jordan domain, so you can you can go along <laughs> with pointed Gromov Hausdorff limit. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the uh, next, so now I will mention uh, some more uh, sophisticated examples. So I will not go into details here, but just I would like to, to say that the examples are numeral. So the space of a two maps, if you have a cut zero space, then the for any matter space, the space of a two maps into this cut zero space is itself cut zero. And uh, um, so some other large spaces, so space of all Riemannian metrics, the Teichmüller space, space of Keller potentials with, so I don't want to say what the metric is, but so they can be naturally equipped with a zero net. And uh, so it, it plays in particular on the case of Keller potentials and, and for the Teichmüller space, an important role. Um, um, if you, 
already have a cut zero space, then within this cut zero or cut kappa space, you find a lot of other cut kappa spaces. So for instance, convex one, but also some non-convex one. So for instance, the, uh, the case of root surfaces. So you take two curves and connect points on it by geodesics and the say and as in the Euclidean uh, space, uh, this shield surface uh, is non is yeah it inherits the upper curvature bound from the ambient space. So one has to be careful uh, by, by by saying what uh, how you measure the metric. But uh, yeah, I don't want to specify this. So this is in fact so this is due to Alexandro and so minimal disks uh, so this is this is due to Mese also in a version of it by myself and Stefan Wenger and then there are my, uh, many more constructions so warp products I will just mention to you some names Alexander and Bishop subsets with bound second fundamental form so you have some kind of Gauss equation uh, in a weak form, and uh, so if your subspace is not uh, is not too far from being convex, then you get an upper curvature bound in the subset. So it's again Alexander Bishop and myself. Then you can have uh, you can control conformal changes. Uh, this is due to myself and Stefan Schneider, and uh, some more. Okay, I don't want to maybe to spend too much time on this example. So if you have some questions then yeah i have just a comment this is theo yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. fact that l2 space of uh, maps into npc or cut zero space i learned from yoast so it's ah. not a result of mine okay sorry yeah yeah i think it's all yeah it's also corey machine so they already uh, maybe also have this yeah corey machine yeah sorry so uh yeah yeah, thanks. Um, okay, so now we uh, change the subs. Uh, so <laughs> now we start with the second lecture properly. So, and um, okay. So, what I would like to talk about now is another. Um, very important theorem of Reshetnyak in this context, it's the so-called ma majorization theorem. So it is, um, yeah. it is a theorem characterizing cut zero spaces. And what is important about this theorem, so uh, in order to check that if you're, okay, uh, so it's a theorem about cut spaces, but it's also a possibility to check if something is a cut space. So what is the statement? So if you have a completed geodesic space, then it is cut zero if and only if a rectifiable, so any closed rectifiable curve is majorized by a convex subset in R2. What does this mean? So if you have this curve gamma in your space X, then the statement is, so if your space is cut zero, then you find a convex subset in mm -hmm. R2, this convex subset C, and uh, uh, which has a boundary, which I denote by O. Oh. Sorry. Mm. Mm. Oh. Sorry, something. Oh, like something happened with my screen. Okay, um, uh, so you, you have um, um, this convex subset C with boundary large gamma, and you have a one Lipschitz map. It's one Lipschitz from C uh, into your space X. So this is inside of X, such that, so call this map F, such that F maps on one. So 
Sorry, something is wrong with my. Oh, okay, and you have and you have a map F from. Uh, so, so the restriction of this map to large gamma, it's is arc length preserving. Arc length preserving. So in particular. In particular, so you you get some kind of uh, so the image of this of what is inside of gamma is some some disk um, so some singular disk which you find inside of your curve gamma. So that's the statement, and uh, to see that this so uh, it, it tells you in a sense that every curve in your cut zero space is not thicker than a curve in in a plane. In some, in the boundary of some convex subset in a plane, and uh, um, so to see the so it's very easy to see to see the so this is an this is an if and only if question. This is an if and only if statement. Oh, I'm sorry. So something is wrong with my um, with my tools. Um, just a second. I will probably need to restart. Oh, it's working, but not completely. Um, No, sorry. Um, okay. Um, uh, just a moment. It's, it's still, it's still, I still cannot really write. Oh, it's really bullshit. I cannot even. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, <laughs> I can write, but I can delete what I write, which is even worse. Um, I don't know what to do with it. I'm very sorry. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to try rebooting your device or whatever you're using there? Maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll try that. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I, I don't know what else to suggest. There. Yeah. Uh, what mm. are you using? You have a tablet or? What? Yeah, I have a tablet. Yeah. Uh, um, okay. So, yeah. I'm... Let's see. Hmm. 
Вот. Окей. Я. I can. А. Uh, what I can do? I can. I can try this. Okay. I can stop this. Okay. Now I. I try that again. Maybe. Uh, maybe that's better. Sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Okay, let us try again. Okay. Uh, yeah, so now it seems to work. Okay, so uh, maybe just one more word about uh, the theorem of Richard Knapp. So the, the easier statement that this- Sorry, Sasha, do you want to go to full screen there? Or... Ah, yeah, yeah, I want you. Thank you. So the statement that this condition is sufficient. Uh, so if you have the state, if you if any closed curve is majorized by a convex subset of R2, then your space is cut zero. Uh, this is very easy to prove. So if you have uh, a triangle, And then the statement is that this triangle is majorized by some Euclidean triangle, uh, by some convex set. So this convex set, uh, so you have here some convex set in, R, in R2, and you must have a one Lipschitz map from this convex set into your space X, such that on the boundary, this uh, this is arc length preserving. Since it's arc length preserving on the boundary, it must, uh, um, so um, the part which is sent on each geodesic must be a geodesic itself. So this already implies that this convex subset majorizing your triangle must be itself a triangle. And now the statement that you have here, a one Lipschitz map, this is uh, this immediately shows that uh, from any point uh, from any point p here from any point p square and here u square p q. So if you take this connection, if you take a connection on the left, then it is mapped into some curve on the left, which has a shorter length. And so the distance between P and Q is not larger than this between P, P um, prime and Q prime. Um, so, and uh, this statement is, is also related to the um, closer. So it should resemble you of the third point in Alexander's lemma, which I have mentioned last time. Okay. So now, uh, um, uh, several characterizations of cut zero spaces. So again, uh, what I have said, on the, so a version of theorem of Fischer-Tag holds for all couples, and also so the characterizations they are also true. So similar characterizations are true for all couples. So the following are equivalent. The space is cut zero. Uh, sum of angles in any triangle is at most pi. This is due to Alexander in the so in the first so in the paper where he has defined what cut is. So he already proved this result. So what, what we already have seen is that in a cut zero space, all angles are uh, not larger than the angles in the in the comparison space in the comparison triangle. So any angle or in X is not larger than the corresponding angle on, in the triangle in R two. So and since the sum of angles in R two is pi, sum of angles in your triangle is at most pi. So but the condition is also uh, sufficient uh, 
for being consumed. Another uh, version is the modularization theorem of Richard Yark, which we have seen on the previous page. Uh, another version, so this is uh, a related version of, of this statement, so a kind of integral version of uh, this modularization theorem. It's due to myself and Stefan Wenger. So, it, it, uh, so the statement uh, of the theorem of Eschetniak is that uh, any closed curve, um, so is, uh, yeah, is S as thin as uh, some curve in the Euclidean plane. And from this, you could easily deduce that any, that you can fill any closed curve uh, by a, a disk whose area is at most the area of the corresponding convex subset in R2. And then using the isoparametric connectivity in R2, you get uh, that this condition is necessary, but it's also sufficient. So, so if you know that you can fill any curve in the same, so by, by disk which, is, which has small enough area when your space is considered. Then there is some, uh, uh, yeah, some nice four point condition. So if for any four points, the sum, uh, this sum of two diagonals squared is at most, the, so it, it's a parallelogram inequality. So then, so this holds it only if your space is con zero. This is due to Berg and Nikolai. And finally, which I would like to mention, is uh, a version of, of uh, yeah, of the theorem of Kirsch Brown, which. I have mentioned last time, the statement is due to Lang and Schroeder. So, and the statement is so that for any, so if you have any subset in Rn and any one Lipschitz map from A to your space, then you can extend it to a one Lipschitz map of, of, of all of Rn. So this is, uh, so that this is sufficient, uh, you can see by just applying uh, the case of three points and uh, mu, uh, so sending x to x, sending x bar to x, y bar to y, z bar to z. And then, any ex and then if you have the extension, then uh, the Euclidean triangle must be mapped in a, in a one Lipschitz. Way. So uh, this is also closely related to the theorem of the Schicknack. So using this, it's easy to prove um, uh, uh, the modularization theorem of Fisher. Okay. So are there questions to this? There is a question somebody is asking if A should be convex. No, it shouldn't. No, no, no. So. Uh, uh, it's uh, so it's easy to see that uh, so to prove it for all a it's enough to prove it for finitely many points so it's a, it's actually a statement about finitely many points so if you have defined so and the statement is so if you if you can define it on finitely many points then you can extend it to one point more so uh, uh, by uh, by trying uh, to prove it for uh, so if you think about this condition for three point spaces and another fourth point um, yeah you will get very close to what con zero is are there other questions and uh, the follow up question is should it be closed uh, no uh, it's uh, so if you have defined on some a then you can extend it to the closure. So this is true. So the extension from A to the closure of A, it works for any, for any complete target. Um, other questions? Does not seem to be the case. Okay, so now I want to say uh, a word about, yeah, several words about localization. So about, it's actually about globalization, but I start with localization. So we have defined a global notion. So what is 
So cut kappa means globally curvature most kappa. So now we say that a space, so this is a definition, definition, a space X has curvature at most kappa if it is locally cut kappa. So meaning every point has a neighborhood which is cut kappa. So for this definition, this recovers the Riemannian notion of curvature bound. So a Riemannian manifold has curvature at most kappa if and on in this sense. So the, uh, the so one also says CBA, so curvature bounded above by kappa. So curvature bounded above by kappa, if and only if all section curvatures are at most kappa. So this is a version of Rauch's comparison theory. So, and there is a statement about um, spaces of curvature at most kappa. This is, yeah, also, this, this is a metric version of uh, comparison theory for Jacobi fields. So, and uh, it tells us that if we have a space, a geodesic space of curvature at most kappa, then there are no conjugate points along local geodesics of length at most say pi if kappa is equal to one or along any geodesic. So what does this mean? It means that if we have any geodesic, any local geodesic, then uh, for a pair of points sufficiently close to the endpoints, there is a unique, there is a unique, so this is x, y, here's gamma, here's x twiddle, y twiddle close to x and y, and then we find a unique, so there exists a unique gamma twiddle local geodesic close to gamma. So what can happen and what happens on the, say, on this circle, or maybe I will draw, yeah, see, I will draw maybe a, a better picture, so, um, say a typical picture is the following one. No. Um, So uh, a kind of, uh, yeah, so something of this shape, it has curvature at most one, but it is not cut one. Why it is not cut one? Yeah, because you find a clue. So because uh, the injectivity radius is too small, if you sit here, then you have uh, two shorter geodesic going to the other side of your short handle. Uh, however, uh, if you go, um, yeah, so if you just go on one side, then for any point here, there, there is a unique geodesic close to the first one nearby. So I don't think I have explained it in a very uh, good way, but is it more or less clear what this, what the statement means, uh, that there are no there are no conjugate points. I have not proved it. So the proof is not, uh, is not, is a little bit technical. But is the statement clear? So the statement is, is uh, this time more important than the proof. Yeah, so, so the statement is adjusted to any local geodesic. Uh, um, if kappa is positive, then it should not be long enough. Um, um, you have, so this geodesic is uniquely determined by its endpoints if you are not allowed to go too far from your geodesic. So if you stay in a neighborhood of your geodesic. Your local geodesic. Okay, so um, are there, um, Questions? 
doesn't seem to be the case. So now we go from localization to globalization. So, um, um, yeah, very typical statement, remaining geometry, mapping geometry. So you have some local assumptions and you want to have some global conclusions. So if you have this for your theory, then your theory is, yeah, uh, should have, uh, yeah, it should be very good. <laughs> yeah, it should have uh, um, improved, uh, good applications. So in here, you have it. Uh, so here there are there's a version of localization of this globalization valid for, for all kappa, but is rather weak. It is the following one. So, uh, a, so so a complete geodesic space. So these are some some minimal global assumptions. We assume that it has curvature kappa at most kappa. So this is a local condition. And now, so in the Riemannian setting, it means that the all section curvatures are at most kappa. And now the statement is that this space is cut kappa if and only if geodesics of length less than pi for kappa equal to one and, uh, and of all lenses for non-positive non kappa are unique. So uniquely determined by the endpoints and for i continuously with the endpoints. Uh, is the statement clear? So essentially, uh, if you are on a locally compact space, then you can forget about uh, the second part, and uh, uh, then the just the statement would be that uh, the geodesics depend uniquely on the endpoints. Then the continuity follows it. So and here's the proof. So the proof of this statement is rather simple. Mm -hmm. So we need to prove that any triangle is thin. What we do, we go on this third side. So we say on the side y, z, and subdivide it uh, uh, by small intervals and connect uh, the points of the subdivision to the point X. Now the statement that uh, that uh, the geodesics are unique and vary continuously, so it implies that uh, we have that uh, by doing so we subdivide the large triangle into triangles which are very thin. And by thin we mean that the geodesics, uh, the two sides, two long sides that go very close to each other for the whole length. So now. We, we apply this statement about uh, thin triangles. So if you know that um, about this gluing of triangles, so if you know that any of these thin triangles is cut kappa, then the whole triangle is cut kappa. And to prove that such a thin triangle is cut kappa, we subdivide it like this. And the assumption that the space is locally Cut kappa, so it means that uh, any of these small triangles is cut kappa. And again, we use this lemma I have mentioned last time, so before proving the Richard Nax gluing theorem, and it, it will tell us that, the, that this long and thin triangle is cut kappa. So it's thin. Is it? Um, uh, uh, do we have questions on this? So this is again, so this is valid for all kappa. No questions? So um, uh, there is a funny application, so which I will not discuss in detail. So for a finite Euclidean simplicial complex, so we have, uh, so we have seen uh, so the Richard Nax gluing theorem. So it allows you to glue uh, to, to start with Euclidean simplices and glue out of it new new cut zero spaces. However, if you take arbitrarily simplicial complexes, then you often need to glue not um, yeah. Then some gluings happen not along convex subsets. So if you just take the pyramid after you have glued. Uh, uh, two sides, if you glue the third one, then you glue it along uh, two sides. If you glue the um, 
third phase, and then you glue it along something which is non-convex. However, so there is a uh, very simple criterion. Uh, so if you take sorry, can, can you uh, can complex, you can you draw a picture that wasn't really okay uh, uh, for the pyramid? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you uh, so yeah, the statement is the following. So if you so when you, so if you have seen the theorem of Ishitnak for the first time, then you might think that any simplicial complex is cut zero, just because you take Euclidean simplices and glue them together along uh, convex subsets. However, it is not the case. So if you take uh, uh, the boundary of the pyramid, which I have drawn here, so then you start with uh, with the first side, say uh, the one which is uh, um, so <laughs> the one you see, then you glue to it the second side, which is on the on the right. You glue it along an edge, which is a convex subset of the first one. And after the gluing, uh, you obtain a cut zero space. However, if you glue the third side to it, then the then uh, then the gluing happens along two edges so you glue so you glue at the same time you glue the third side along this edge to the first side and along that edge to the second side and together this uh, these two edges they don't yeah this is not a convex subset and so after the gluing what you get is not zero. <coughs> Uh, is it better now? Is it better understandable? Yes, yes. Uh, and mm -hmm. so, so just, just to be clear, you're talking here about the surface of the pyramid. And not, not I'm talking about the, yeah, I'm talking about the boundary. To the, to the so boundary, the, yeah. two dimensional thing, right? So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, so actually, uh, yeah, one could do the same for a triangle, but uh, but then it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's confusing because, yeah, there are two points along them. I'm okay. still confused. Yeah. Uh, so here, what are your two sets that you glue? So uh, uh, I have, uh, so my pyramid, so the boundary of my pyramid consists of four triangles. Yeah. These are the triangles uh, called one. So the first one is the one we see in the first phase. The second phase is on the right, the third on the left. And the fourth on the bottom. So your sets are triangles. Yes, my sets oh, okay. are Euclidean triangles. Okay. I see. And now uh, my surface consists of four triangles. Now I claim that uh, first of all it is not okay. So I'm not proving it is not cut zero. It's yeah, it's not cut zero because it's not contractible. So but but why does the but I explain why it does not contradict Rochetnik's theorem. It is the case because, because we, we not always glue along convex sets. Yeah. So the first gluing of uh, the first side to the second happens along one edge. And this is a convex set in, ah, in the first and in the second. Ah, you are, yes. you're getting the sphere. That's the yes. point. Ah, yes. Okay, I got it. Okay, good. So, yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So now, um, uh, globalization, so then, yeah, the main part of the globalization. So we assume now that kappa is at most zero. So the kappa is non-positive. Then the statement is that there is a curve shortening process, process uh, which, so you start with a curve and you can attach to this curve a local geodesic with the same endpoints. And this process is continuous. So if your curve is uh, moved only a little bit, then uh, uh, so if gamma zero is close to, uh, yeah. So if you move your curve slightly, then the end of the process also has changed only slightly. Uh, sorry, the assumptions here uh, is CBB kappa space, right? Yes, so yeah. CBB kappa yeah. space. Yes, 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 so X. Is uh, is a geodesic space of curvature at most kappa. 
So, and here is the proof. So the proof is a very simple picture. So if this is our curve gamma, then what we do is the following. So we start, we start at the beginning and we, so we let the end part of the curve fixed and the beginning part we make straight. And now we use that there are no conjugate points. So if we have come to some point, then near this point, uh, there is uh, for any point close to the end point of this segment, there is a, there is a unique local geodesic connecting uh, my starting point with that one. And so we can continue in this way and come to the end. And this uh, final local geodesic, so this is the straightening. So this is gamma. Here and this is gamma one. And again, so this statement about no conjugate point, it, it applies more or less immediately that this process is uh, well-defined and continuous. And what does it give us? It gives us the following. It gives us that uh, following version of the theorem of Catan Lemann, that if X is complete, geodesic, and has curvature at most kappa, so, uh, um, it's CBA kappa, then X is cut kappa if and only if it's simply connected. So otherwise, if you have a non simply connected one, you take a universal covering and this is cut kappa. And this is only true for non-positive kappa. So this is a globalization theorem. So you know about your space something only locally and you have a, a global conclusion. Okay, so uh, why this? Now, yeah, uh, so assume your space is not, cut, say kappa is equal to zero. So assume your space is not cut zero, then we find, say, two, ge two, two geodesics between two endpoints. Here's x, here's y. And now because your space is simply connected, we can connect these two curves through a family of curves. And now we can straighten all of these curves by this process. And then what we get is we start so that we have two geodesics, gamma zero, gamma one. And here in between, we find some local, some family of local geodesics connecting X and Y. But now we again use that there are no conjugate points. And so all the geodesics must coincide. So gamma zero must be equal to gamma one. So it's, yeah, it, it, it's very tautological. So it does seem, so, so the whole thing seems trivial now, but uh, so it's really a kind of fundamental result in the theory. Uh, in, uh, there is a version of this last statement for kappa equal to one, but it's, it is less useful. So it, it, reads, in the, it, it reads in the following, Way so a, a geodesic compact locally cut one space is cut one if and only if there are no isometrically embedded circles which have lengths less than two pi. Okay. Are there questions about about this? does not seem to be the case. And then, uh, then I, yeah, I will say really only two words about, so cut zero in groups. So there's a whole and very flourishing theory, the geometric group theory and theory of cut zero groups. So, and uh, the, the origin is the following. So if you have a locally cut zero space, then it's universal covering is contractible. So it tells you that uh, all topology of the space is, um, yeah, um, um, so the only top all topological invariants are within your fundamental group. So X is a so-called KP1 space, and the topology of X is encoded and, and also the cost topology of uh, the universal covering is encoded in the fundamental group. And this is the, so you can, you can study the group and fundamental group and you can study the global properties of your space, but I don't want to go into it. So I will skip 
everything which is on this page. Okay, so now I, I, I have a little bit less than uh, 10 minutes. I want to say something about uh, several tools uh, very useful in the theory of uh, cut, this magic cut zero spaces. So the first one is convexity. So I have all the mentioned so that uh, uh, cut zero spaces are as convex as Euclidean spaces. And uh, so one can use uh, convex functions, convex sets in order to study them. So they are mentioned. So we have very controlled properties, convexity properties of distance functions. And there are lots of convex subsets. So balls are convex and there are horror balls and much more. And there is another very important property. So semi concave functions, in particular concave functions, they have uh, well defined gradients and they are gradient flows which are as contracting as in the in the Hilbert or Euclidean. Uh, okay, so if you uh, yeah, so but I don't want oh, I don't want to uh, to go into it. Um, yeah, I think for for people who have seen it, they know it, and others it will be too short. So. I want to say a little bit more about uh, center of mass construction. So I think, yeah, again, I'm not sure if, uh, yeah, <laughs> if this would be correct. So I would again say I would mention Theo Sturm here, but maybe it's, yeah, it has been known before. Uh, so at least in parts, definitely. So it has been definitely also used by Klein. So what is it about? So there is a center of mass map, which assigns to a probability measure, which has, so if X is, uh, yeah, it should have sufficiently small support. So if X is cut one, then the support should be what? Yeah, say small diameter. If it's cut zero, it suffices that it, is, that it has a compact support. Uh, yeah, and it should be a say probability measure. Yeah. Uh, and so it assigns to a measure a point, the center of mass of this measure. So, and if kappa is a, is non positive, then this map is contracting from, uh, yeah, if you equip uh, the space of measures with a natural distance function. And uh, this map is defined just in the following way. So, uh, you take the point in your space for which this integral. Um, for which this integral uh, is minimal. The point is so that uh, the distance functions, they are uh, strong. Sorry, uh, question. Uh, what metric are you taking here on the set of probability measures? Uh, you take the, um, yeah, the, uh, the A2 metric. So the- uh, What's the metric? So. Sorry, sorry. You uh, take the so Wasserstein metric? What the take? Wasserstein metric, yeah. Oh, which one? W2? Um, w1? W2. Yeah, I, I think it's, yeah, dub, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's for both of them, it's contracting. But I, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I would be, aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So for W2, I think, yeah. So sorry, I'm, yeah. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure now. For, uh, for W2, so I'm pretty sure, but yeah. Um, okay, so the point is so that the distance function. Contracting in W1 and in W2. W1 and in W2, yeah. Oh, okay, so, yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Sarah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> so again, so, so the point is that this function, so the, the distance function squared, so they are strongly they're strongly convex. So also the integral of this function is also strongly convex. So there is a unique, so there is a unique minimum of this function. And this is the center of mass of this measure. And so in the very important example, so if you take uh, finite, so if you take linear combination 
of Dirac meshes, then uh, this map just assigns the C, uh, so, so C of mu is uh, the point X in your space such that the sum of these distances AI is minimal. So, and this, uh, so if you let AI run from zero, uh, so if you go over all AIs such that this, uh, the AIs are non negative and the sum is one, so then you see uh, a simplex in the space of measures. And this map, if you then for any AI, you get a point in your space, and this is the so-called barycentric simplex in your cut zero or cut kappa space. Now, is it uh, is it clear what what it means? So, so here for point zero zero one, zero one zero, and so on, or one zero zero. This goes so for any point on the simplex of for, for, for different AIs, you get different points, and uh, this defines so this map as one option. So you get a lot of uh, singular simplices in your space, and the simplices that they play, they play, yeah, an important role in cut spaces. So since it can be used to establish. Um, um, yeah, a dimension theory. So this is due to Klein. So for any, uh, so for any point in your space, you have the space of direction. The space of direction is cut one. The cone of the space of directions is geodesic tangent cone. It is cut zero. It is not. It is smaller than any blow up at the space X. So if you rescale the space and go to, yeah, and go to the limit, then it, then the limit must can be much larger, but this tangent cone, so this, yeah, it sits in all of the space and this itself cut zero. So, and now there is a, there is the following theorem. So for, for a cut zero, for a cut kappa space, the following, Mm, numbers are equal. So the topological dimension of the space, the homological dimension, uh, then the maximal dimension of the space of directions, so plus one. So and this allows you some inductional approach to the spaces. So you can try to understand them by first understanding the spaces of directions and then understanding the space of directional directions. So you can decrease the dimension, so step by step. So, and so the most interesting one, so this maximal dimension of non-degenerate barycentric simplex. So barycentric simplex is what I have defined on the previous page by using um, yeah, center of masses. And degeneracy means that, uh, yeah, that it is degenerated like this, that, uh, that it is contained in the image of uh, its faces. So, and yeah, and this is essentially all one can say about general, about topology on general cut spaces. Okay. So my time is over. Um, yeah, um, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you. Uh...